screen is a poet from Tibet. Her name is Wozer. She wrote a poem called On the Other Side. It has to do with that time at the end of life when you're on your way to the other side. And she wrote that there comes a time when you can poke your finger through the thin, thin sheet. And I believe at that time, all of us can look back over our lives and see things with a full knowledge, a full knowledge that remarkably naturally shows us things where emotion sort of melts away. That knowledge gives us a sense of why things really had been the way they were. And the way they should be. Okay, Moser, you'd be happy. Okay. Yesterday, I took a train from Amsterdam down to Maastricht. And as I did, um, they, something happened, and we all had to get off the, the train. And um, they, I, I didn't understand what they were saying, so I thought, I better do this. My point is, 70 years, ago, 70 years ago, you would have had a different fear when we got on that bus. The reason we have certainty is that there's... Things such as GPS, internet, a smartphone allowed me to know exactly what was happening, had my position, had my way of knowing what was going to happen. We're at the edge of a totally remarkable transformation that is going on in which the ability to actually have that type of information about ourselves, about our diseases, is coming from the use of various technologies, genomic technologies, information as you just heard. And the speed at which that's occurring is making it possible now to do things like build maps that few, soon will look rather strange. But this is a map of obesity. <laughs> Those red dots are the components in that system that if you push on them, switch you back and forth between being in good health and being obese. That's a really crude map. But what's coming, and this is my first take-home message, is we're about to build a contour map of disease where each one of us actually can be plotted on there. We can see where we are and actually the choices that we make in our daily lives. Not what we were born with genetically, but what we do ourselves with our lives will allow us to see where we are, whether we're headed into Alzheimer's, whether we're headed into diabetes. And it's going to be as fundamentally different, I think, as when we left the Dark Ages. I think we're gonna realize, my God, I lived in a world where I never thought that way. And this ability, to have that ability to know where you are, what's happening, is coming about. Here is the problem. When we look at information systems, you can see the Berlin Wall, we, we know when something is closed. This example here, or this example in Tehran, where if you notice, in highlighted magic marker is the few zones where you can and cannot use uh, cell phone coverage. And there are scenarios where, where we know that information is locked up and it shouldn't be, and we get angry about it. This is where it becomes sad. When it comes to medical information, we don't have that vitriolic anger about how closed it is. Institutions are built as closed guilds, where that information is put together. Um, sometimes it's sold to, to industry. Biotech is sitting there trying to keep its data to itself in order to make something valuable to a pharmaceutical company. Pharmaceutical companies are sitting there positioning with each other, trying not to share in case they can get a product out before another. Hospitals, similarly, don't really want that data to be out there in ways that might allow one to look at what really is going on. And even patient advocate communities often want to have this control, have the data where, where they can say, this is what is best for our patients. We live in a medical industrial complex where along this path, people do 
rather well. The question is, what's going on to the patient? Is this the way the patient would actually set up the system? We at Sage Bio Networks have been working on what are the components that you might need to build an entirely different value structure. Could you build a sandbox where geeks and scientists could work together and actually share the data and get the reward? Have an ability where if they work together, someone knows what they've done, rewards them before publication, called Synapse. At the same time, we realized you would like to put together structures where it's very clear how you reward for sharing. And if you remember Star Trek, there was a federation set up in Star Trek. And we used those uh, rules, we set that name, federation, and it allows individuals within that lab to act and do exactly what they want to as if they were in some very large lab. And when you do that, you can do an experiment such as we did where we took drops of blood and found that we could predict how old someone functionally was, not how old their chronologic age. They could look at their biologic age and develop that type of assay that you would never have been able to do by itself. But in order to do all of that, we realized that you have to bring in and put center front the citizen. And in order to do that and to get around issues of privacy that people like Uncle LeBron and others think very hard about, what we had to do was set up a way where the control of, of the data actually came back to the patient, where we said, if, I take a, if you take a sample from me, I want that data back. That's mine. And I'll give you the sample, but you're going to give me that data back and get the control to the patient who then can say, by the way, I would like to share. If you go on weconsent.us, you'll get to the site where John Wilbanks, who built this, um, can describe that in more detail. And then finally, we realize that that geeky sandbox where the scientists are working is good to get certain work done, but you have to have something where actually we change the role of the citizen, set it up so that actually a citizen can be in any of the roles of whether they are a funder, themselves, whether they are a patient giving data, or whether in fact um, they're doing the research themselves. We totally underestimate the public and the ability of them to be able to interact with each other. And so I call this democratization of uh, medicine, a project that just to give you a glimmer of what it would be like is being done in Parkinson's disease. The real name Parkinson project takes 50 to 200 patients with Parkinson's, whole genome sequence, real name, put it out on the web, everyone to see, all their data, follow it longitudinally, and invite people. What would you do with it? How would you like to work with it? That's the way to set up an interaction that allows people to, to work together. And so I will end with two themes. Remember, sharing among researchers and the ability to have those interactions called Research 2.0, and the ability to democratize medical sciences so the role that each of us play is not in a box, is something that should allow us to move to a world where we have those contour maps. That will happen if all of you and everyone who can begins to realize you're more than just a citizen. Thank you very much.